So we've already seen the theory of queries in action in that they allow you to filter out the data. So you don't have to see all the columns that are in a table. You don't have to see all the rows that are in a table. So how do we actually go about creating and then saving and running our own select query? Well, we open our database and we're going to use the customer's database in your working file. We go to create on the ribbons and we come to the queries section. Now you can go through the query wizard but we're going to do this ourselves. So it's query design. Now what this does is opens two things. It opens the query grid, which is this grid behind, and in front of that it brings up the show table dialog box, asking us to choose the table or tables we want to base our query on. Well, luckily, there's not much of a decision to make because there's only one table, TBL customers. So I choose that table and add, and it gets added to the grid. I can then close the dialog box. Now the table appears in the top half, so think of this top half of the screen as the in. So this is the in to the query. Into this query, I bring all the columns, all the rows of TBL customers. Now, this isn't a requirement for it to work, but it certainly helps when you're trying to build your query. If we open up the table as far as we can to try and show all the columns. That includes not only the height, but the width, so that you can see the long names I think that's about probably a little bit further. I'm not going to be able to open this table up entirely to see all the columns because there's quite a few of them. But I can adjust the grid here by grabbing and dragging down. I only need to see these rows, the field, the table, the sort, the show, the criteria and the or. So I do have a bit more space. Now what you will find is with a short table, if you manage to open it up enough, the scroll bar will disappear and that will save you looking for columns. So we have everything coming in, all the rows, all the columns from the TBL customers. The bottom half of the grid decides what we want to pull out using this select query. So the first thing to decide is which columns. Well, I'd like the first name. So there are a number of ways of taking the first name and placing it into the output part. The first way would be simply to double click. If I double click first name, it then jumps down to the first available column. If I want then the last name, let's do that a different way. So I select the last name. I can then grab and drag and drop it into the second position. A third method, if I want their email address, will be to actually come into the next available column, choose the little drop down, and choose email address. So there's three ways really of deciding which columns you want to see. The double click is probably the fastest. The double click will always drop it into the next available space. The drop down will allow you to pick any of the columns you see fit. And the drag and drop will actually allow you to put it where you want, not necessarily at the end. It may be, for example, that I'd like the title as well, but I need it here before the first name. Well, we go back up to title, click and grab, bring down until you get over the top of the first name. And what will happen is it will put the title in this position, as you see, and then just bump the other columns along. So I'm asking to see the title, the first name, the last name, and the email address. So this is restricting the number of columns that I see of my data. It's not restricting the number of rows. If I then go to view up here on the design ribbon, you'll see I then see all of my rows, so all 18,000 of them, but I only see the title, the first name, the last name, and the email address. Now I can widen that column so that I can see the whole the email address. To go back to the query, I go back to the design set square. Notice how it's changed. So it goes from design to view. If you use the drop down, there is actually another view, which is SQL view, which we will explore at a later date. But we're going to stick with view and design view. So view shows me the data, the result of my query. Design shows me the design of my query. So the decision that I'm making on which tables to use, which columns from which tables, and then filtering out for the rows. So this is a basic query. I've added my table. I've added the columns I wish to see. I would then need to save the query. So I click Save on the toolbar. Queries tend to be prefixed by QRY. The only reason for that is so that when you see them out of context, you know that it's a query. You can come up with your own naming convention, but QRY is fairly common or simply just Q in a lot of cases as well. I'm going to stick with QRY for query. 
and then the most sensible thing to call a query is what it's doing, what it's showing me my customers. So I'm going to call it QRY customer names because it's showing me their names. Notice how I don't use any spaces as well. This is not a requirement in Access, but it does make life a little easier when you go further down the line and you start to add in some programming. So for the moment, I'm going to avoid spaces. Without the spaces, it becomes a little harder to read, so I tend to put things in camel case. So you can see QRY, then a capital C, then a capital N, just to make that slightly easier to read. So OK, and then you'll see that that query arrives in my queries list on the left-hand side here. So if I then close the design of the query, I can rerun my query from here simply by double-clicking it, and that reruns the query. So re-extracts the data. If there's any new people, they're added in. If there's less people, you don't see them. Because the query does not store any data. It just stores the question, the query. All that this query has been told to do is extract the title, the first name, the last name, and the email address of everybody in the customer's table, and it will do that every time you run it. So I close, double click, and it runs. Now, if I need to go back into design of the query, I can right click and choose design view, and that takes me back into design view, where I'm then able to flick between view and design very quickly and very easily using the query tools design context sensitive ribbon. So that's how to create a basic query, saving it with a sensible naming convention of your own, and then running the query simply by viewing the data.